Uh, I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving, and um, we're going to be quick today so you can go back to watching the World Cup. Um, we had a great discussion in our caucus. Uh, we had a lot to discuss as we embark on the final stretch, stretch of the 117th Congress, uh, and it was a very good discussion on, on the rules changes. Now, first on the docket is the passage for respect for marriage giving millions of Americans equal justice under the law, peace of mind, knowing their right to marry the person they love is protected. Passing the bill is our chance to send to a message to Americans everywhere, no matter who you are, where, who you are or who you love, you too deserve dignity and equal treatment under the law. As you know, this is personal to me. In 2020, Right, at the, right after the passing of just, just, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, we were at a family dinner, and my daughter and her wife were distraught and asked me, could our marriage be undone? Today, a new day has come for them, in the, and in the new year, they'll be welcoming their first child, my third grandchild, God willing, in a few months. Um, with the passage of this bill, though, I think not just about them, and the millions of Americans it'll impact, but about my future grandchild. That child will now grow up in a more accepting, inclusive, and loving world, a world that will honor their mother's marriage and give it the dignity it deserves. And I want to thank Senator Baldwin, who is here, as well as Senator Sinema and Senators Collins, Portman, and Tillis for helping us get this bill passed and doing such a great job in rounding up the votes and putting together a compromise that the Senate finds acceptable. Um, and thank you above all to the American people, and I mean this. Thank you to the American people, the vast majority of whom have understood that the inexorable march to equality is what America is all about. There are some hateful voices out there, but in general Americans understand this. God bless them. So, Yes, it's a great day for Americans, but a great day for our future, as future generations of Americans as well. Now on the Omni, we have to pass an omnibus, not just to fund the government and keep our country moving, but to keep us innovating, to keep our country safe, ensure we're providing for our troops and our veterans. At the White House this morning, the four leaders and the President, we had a very good discussion about the omnibus, and we all agreed that the best option is to avoid a pointless and painful shutdown and to work together. A continuing resolution doesn't cut that. It clear, clearly hurts our military. It clearly hurts our national security. It clearly undercuts our great men and women in the armed forces, and Jack will talk about that in a minute. And so um, Leader McConnell and I, we, we I think everyone wants an omnibus. We have different views of what should be in the omnibus. But we have agreed, the four leaders and the four heads of the appropriations committees, to sit down very shortly and begin thrashing out how we can come together and get an omnibus done. That doesn't mean we have agreement on where it should be. That doesn't mean it's a done deal at all. But it means the door is open now to discussing an omnibus, which it wasn't uh, a few days ago, because no one knew what every, where everybody was at. Okay? And one final thing I just have to mention, I did on the floor yesterday, the president, the former president and his um, dinner companion. Now he says, well, he didn't know that Kanye West, bad enough he was meeting with Kanye West, but, or Kanye West, um, but he didn't know that this vi virulent anti-Semite, this vicious man, Fuentes, was coming to dinner. But now he knows he was at dinner and he still hasn't denounced him. That is just an utter disgrace. That is un-American. That is not what any leader of any party, of any philosophy should do. I do praise many in the Republican Party and many in the Jewish community who supported the President, President Trump in the past, for condemning him, but we're still waiting. The silence is deafening and appalling. Senator Reid.